Hi, my name is Ron Holland. I want to talk to you about the difference in walking in darkness and walking in the light. When the grid is down. If you have not already completed the conversion to rechargeable batteries for everything you expect to operate, do you think you might be a little behind the curve? Now in this video, we're going to focus on lighting. You and every member of your family and crew are going to need handheld LED lights powered by rechargeable batteries. There is a plethora of these lights available. We're going to look at only a few. Here is one light that operates on a AA size battery. I selected this one because of its small size. It's a basic everyday carrier or general purpose light. It twist on and twist off. It has a high and a low. Very basic operation. High, low, on and off, but small size. Here is another light that uh, larger than the first, but another example of a light that operates on a single AA size battery. This one comes with a few more features. First, it's activated by a tail switch, and in one mode can operate as a tactical flashlight. Press for momentary and it can be locked on. But it can also, with just a twist of the bezel, can be operated as an everyday or general purpose light. It has high, medium, and low, and some flashing features that I find a little bit cumbersome. But this light also has a unique feature in that it will operate on a lithium ion 14500 battery. If you're not familiar with that, let me show you. Here's your typical copper top battery. Of course, most lights that will operate on a AA battery will operate either on the con conventional alkaline 1.5 battery or the 1.2 volt rechargeable nickel metal hydride battery. Now check this out. A AA size 3.6 volt lithium ion battery. This battery allows the PA-10 and other lights designed to accept it to operate in turbo mode, ultra bright. Now it can damage non-compatible lights. It's only 900 milliamp hours, so it will not give you the runtime of the other two batteries. Oh, a word of caution, when you're purchasing lithium ion batteries, they're available either with or without the protective circuitry. Always purchase the batteries with the circuitry. It prevents you from over discharging and ruining the battery. That lithium ion batteries are a game changer is hardly front page news anymore. But it is still hard to imagine that you can take a flashlight made for a single AA battery, combine it with a 14500 and get the kind of light output that this light produces. But the lithium ion batteries have also been a game changer for a few of our older lights. Here are a couple of old uh, Surefire lights, a Z2 combat light that preceded LED days, and a little outdoorsman. Now both of these lights are excellent lights. However, they operate on the old 123 battery, and for years there was no rechargeable 123 battery. I can't rely on a device that doesn't have a rechargeable battery. So I'd place these two fellows into semi-retirement. Enter the rechargeable lithium ion battery. So, these boys are back in the game. Now, while we're on the subject of really neat lithium ion batteries, here's a 3.6 volt lithium ion rechargeable recently introduced. This is the 2032. Many of you will recognize this little button battery as being the battery that powers your red dot aiming device or your illuminated reticle rifle scope. There it is. There's the charger that powers it. And here's a small little LED light that operates on a 2032. This light is made to be attached to the brim of a cap, momentary, or can be locked on. Now when you only need a small amount of illumination, this is a hard light to beat. I recommend you have a few of them. Now I want to mention one other light just to open your mind to the possibilities. This light, obviously much larger than the others, is not intended for daily carry. This is a predator hunting light. This one has a red emitter, though it can be had with other emitter options. It comes with a charger, 18650 battery, and the hardware that allows it to be mounted to a weapon. With this light, you can identify and engage predator-sized targets at 100 yards. Now here's a small light that you'll find interesting if you're not familiar with this kind of light. Obviously not intended to be pocket or hand carried. 
but rather to be, to be mounted, this one can be mounted either on a pistol or on a carbine. Its ambidextrous can be activated with a thumb by either hand. Now, with the proper hardware, even our standard pocket or hand carry light can be mounted on a weapon for a tactical purpose. Here's an example of one mounted on an 870 shotgun. Now, I'm not about to recommend one of these lights over another. There are a huge number of these lights available with varied features. It's largely a matter of personal preference. Uh, I would only recommend that you stay away from the inexpensive, I'll say cheap, uh, variety of department store lights. They will work, but only for a short while, and they'll fail you at the least opportune moment. I'd say if you're not paying at least uh, 30 or $40 in 2013 money for your light, you're not getting enough light. There is one light, however, that I will strongly recommend. The Mr. Beams family of battery-operated LED motion-activated dark-only and remote-controlled lights. Now, I've tried virtually every light in this category. And there's not even a close second. These lights work extremely well. This particular one operates on three D-cell batteries. Now because the light can be mounted or left portable, you're going to find that it has a multitude of uses, including general purpose, tactical, and security. I bought a number of them online for $20 a piece. I recommend your minimum first order be three or four units, and I can almost guarantee you, you're gonna place more orders. Now, I do have a short list of recommendations in the battery department for you. First of all, do keep a supply of the standard alkaline battery, 1.5 volt. These batteries are stronger, they last longer, and they have a longer shelf life than your rechargeable batteries. You can't rely on them totally because, well, we don't know how many you're gonna to have to have but they're gonna be the go-to battery when your rechargeable batteries are all depleted. And I usually carry an alkaline battery as a backup. Number two, your standard rechargeable nickel metal hydride battery, 1.2 volt, will be your standard go-to day in, day out battery. Now, unfortunately, they have a short shelf life. Once they're purchased, they need to be cycled, that is charged and discharged. So you're gonna to have to determine how many you need, how many spares you need, purchase that number and maintain them and then monitor them so that when you have batteries that need to be retired, you can replace them. Next, I recommend some scheme of marking and dating your battery so that you can identify your battery and know about when it was placed in service. Next, obviously you're gonna to have to have some source of power to operate your charger. And no, a generator is not the answer. Fuel's gonna be scarce. Even if you have an endless supply of fuel, it takes a long time to charge some of these batteries and the charging current is very small. That's a terribly inefficient use of fuel and equipment. But a solar charger is the answer. Now we'll have more to say about that in a few moments. Now, when you select your general purpose charger for your nickel metal hydride, AAA, AA, C, D, 9 volt batteries. Select one that either comes with or has as an option a 12 volt power source. This will enable you to operate your charger directly from your 12 volt solar power source. Many of your lithium ion chargers operate only from a 120 volt source, although this one has the option of a 12 volt source input, but that means you're gonna have to have an inverter. I recommend the pure sine wave inverter as opposed to the less expensive modified sine wave inverters. Most of your lithium ion chargers, including those that operate your power tools, will not operate from a modified sine wave inverter. Now, let us consider our needs in a basic solar power station. First of all, we're gonna be highly dependent on batteries. We're gonna be using hand tools, battery powered lights and radios every day. We may need to charge batteries every day. That simply means that your system is going to have to be designed and configured to meet your needs. These kinds of systems aren't normally catalog items at Harbor Freight or your online solar stores. So, give us a call. We'll design the system around your needs, we'll give you the support you need, and help you get it connected and operating, and we will guarantee you a fair price. Lip syncing at its best.